In 2 Samuel, we read a story about a young man named... Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Thank you, Ellie. Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth is a lame young man who is hurt when he was fleeing after the death of his grandfather, Saul. And in these days, if there was anyone left of the lineage of a former king, he was to be put to death. You see, we couldn't have somebody of the lineage of a former king that could potentially rise up and try to stake a claim to the throne. And now David was the king and David had every right to put the lineage of Saul far behind him. But David says in verse one of our text, is there still anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness to Jonathan? Why would David want to show kindness to Jonathan? But I want us to go to 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 3, where it says, Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. You see, in this text, David was the underdog. And Jonathan was the one that was in the lineage of Saul. He was the son of a king. He had everything. And yet, in his heart, he loved David. And they made a covenant. And now we see, in 2 Samuel chapter 9, David wanted to fulfill this covenant that he made with Jonathan. Why should David keep this covenant? And the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God? To him and when David asks this question he's not saying look at how great I am he's not saying um, look at how wonderful my relationship with Jonathan was what he's saying is how can God be glorified in my commitments he wanted to show the kindness of God to him and if we look at covenants throughout the scriptures they all point to one thing and that is God the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob so what did David do to pursue Mephibosheth? In verse th four and five, he said, the king said to him, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, he is in the house of Mahar, the son of Amiel at Lodabar. Then King David sent and brought him from the house of Michar, the son of Amiel at Lodabar. David went to a low place to find Mephibosheth. And I know that God has come to a low place to find me where I'm at. He made a place for him at the king's table. In verse 13, it says, So Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, for he always ate at the king's table. It doesn't get any more intimate than this. And I believe that there's always an invitation for us to come and eat at the king's table. But when you eat at the king's table, you become a part of the family. And I just wonder, when I read this verse, I think about Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And in that moment, when Mephibosheth sat at the table, either David was remembering the way that God spoke to him when he was in the field, or it impacted him in such a way that he later penned the words, you prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And I believe that Today, as I stand here, gleaning from this life of someone who deserved to die, I know that I can have life. When we look at the life and the story of Mephibosheth, we see that God keeps his promises. We see that God's anointed, David, keeps his promises. And we also see that we can be a part of God's promises.